advantages. Hi guys, we're going to get started. We have the forum. Thank everybody for coming today, and uh, I'll lead us in the word of prayer. Lord, thank you for being here with us today, and just thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for protecting us last night in the storms. Uh, be with us as we make decisions for the citizens of the state of Alabama. We just honor you. Amen. Amen. Clerk, call roll. Mr. Ingram. Here. Ms. Woods. Dr. Boyd. Representative Hurst. Here. Representative Standridge. Here. Representative Clark. Representative Crawford. Here. Representative Jones. Here. Rep Thank you. Representative Fiddler. Here. Representative Hammett. Representative Harrison. Here. Representative Dubs. Here. Yep, sir. Thanks. Before we get started, we have uh, we have lost a member. Um, underwear. I mean underwear. <laughs> but uh, he has gone. He has actually was appointed at the same time, and he's been going to general fund, but it meets at the same time. It's just legit logistically, it's problematic. So we have Representative uh, Standish. Thank you for joining us and. Uh, you're not allowed to ask any questions for three meetings. <laughs> uh, we welcome your wisdom and uh, your leadership. Thank you, sir. Um, all right. Let's see if everybody just turned their cell phone on silent. We'll get started. Is there anything I need to do before we do? We are good. Good, good. All right. Uh, Senator Weaver, you're first up with uh, SB 168. You have the floor, man. It is great to be here with y'all today. Like. I, I, I was starting to call you representative, but uh, you know, that'd be appropriate. I've been called a lot more. You know, <laughs> I'm moving to my phone. Yeah. Yeah. So just to tell you a little bit about this, it's about um, a commercial development authority. And I represent areas that have a lot of small towns that are not big commercial development authorities, but they do economic development in, in their small towns. And in one of my towns, they had an issue because they can currently do economic development for shopping centers or buildings that have mm -hmm. uh, two or more commercial enterprises in, but sometimes there's a situation that they will have a building that's vacant and it's a single tenant, like a restaurant. And currently they can't work with those buildings and this bill will give them the opportunity to do that. All right, any questions? Senator? I hear a favor report. Second. Sorry. All in favor say aye. aye. Uh, all opposed likewise. Everyone on my wish was this evening. I would say we're Thank you all so much. Thank Have you. a wonderful day. All right, next field up, uh, HP 305. Representative, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Members of the committee, this bill uh, was brought to me by Southeast Alabama Gas District. This bill only affects gas districts, which you know has to be multiple cities involved to create a gas district but it increases the pay of their board members and the board chair. I think it, they're $1,000 a month now, and it'll go up to $1,750. The chair is $1,250, it'll go up to $2,000. That's just for ceiling. They do not automatically have to pay them this amount. They can just choose to raise it, but it can't go over that ceiling amount. The money comes from their bottom line, and it only affects those members within the district. Southeast Alabama Gas District right now is 14 cities that are involved in that. All the mayors are members of that board or a designee if they so choose. But they meet monthly in order to conduct their business and this is just a way to, they wanna pay their board members and their board chair just a little bit more money to do so. It has to be a legislative act because gas districts were created by the legislature in order for them to do it. So it comes out of their bottom line. There's no state funds involved in this whatsoever. Any questions for the sponsor? Uh, just one. Uh, if it's two or more municipalities that form this gas district, I'm only talking about those kind of gas districts. Just those kinds of gas districts, nothing else. If it's a single member uh, entity, municipality or county that does their own gas, this does not apply to them. Why does it take a 
change the program. That's the way it was done in 1952 under Chapter 50, Article 12. Said that if they do any changes to the compensation or how they conduct business, it has to be done through a legislative act. Is that the last time this has been done? Uh, that I do not know, but it's been a long time. I know I served on the city council in Troy for 10 years, and this is the way it was. So it's my understanding it's been that way for a long time. If that was the case, they got paid a lot of money back then. Yeah, exactly. I, I guarantee you that that number was a lot lower back then. <laughs> All right, any more questions for your paper report? I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. Uh, all opposed likewise. Bill's given a paper. Thank you. Paper appreciate report. it. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up is uh, HB 338, Representative Butler. You have the floor, sir. It's so it's great to be with you guys, Mr. Chairman and members, and thank you for allowing me to be here. <clears throat> this bill addresses the restrictions that are in Class 4 municipalities, which is Gadsden and Tuscaloosa. But Tuscaloosa is exempt from this. This will only affect Gadsden. But this would remove the restriction. Currently, they have to, they cannot hire the same accountant for more than three years. If you really like your accountant and want to keep them, um, this would remove that restriction. Uh, one of our former colleagues, uh, Craig Ford, is the mayor of Gadsden now. And it actually done an incredible job as mayor, and he had requested this. He really likes the account they have right now. And I was on the board with it. You guys are always with it. Wasn't that who beat you out the first time? Or y'all <laughs> <laughs> he, he was complicit in that. Yeah. But we, we are getting along with Greg and we're doing this. Good. Great things for everybody. Okay. But let's start to listen to the prayer. Well, as I understand, when the bill was passed ages ago, they just exempted him, whoever the representative at the time had exempted himself from it. And Craig laughed and said he didn't pay attention. He could have still done it. But, so, but it allows them, they may want to change every year, or may want to keep them for four or five or six years. But it's just it's a little cumbersome to them to keep having to keep changing. But he would like that flexibility to him. Senator Perry. I'll move to the president. Uh, the the initial three year cycle. Do you know why? What this was? This was this was a probably prior to a lot of us being here. The general accounting rules set up that it's set for that. They do that in large municipalities too, because. If not, the accountant become so familiar with the staff that they actually become part of the staff. And that's that's why it was initially done. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that makes sense. Yeah, that, but, uh, yeah that, it doesn't affect the municipalities. I'm sorry about so up, man. But I, I was just wondering um, why that became an issue because you can select the same firm after three years again under, under state law. I'm, I'm just interested in why they built the set for that. Yeah. In the we have the first. Uh, uh, right. yeah. And so you can get a three year contract or you can no. get an annual contract. No, you can get a three year contract. Um, then you can get a three year contract that's renewed and, and you know, some are longer than that, some are longer. But it, it, that, the original reason for rebidding it was because of familiarity. If people work together so long, then they, they don't really become auditors anymore. They become accountants. Yeah. Get a little All right, we have a motion. Right here, a second. Second. All in favor say aye. All opposed likewise. HB 338 is given in favor. Thank you so much, guys. All right, uh, we have a representative for uh, Senator Beasley. Let me interrupt you just a second. This is on eight, uh, FB 161. I'm sorry. Okay. This bill authorized county sheriffs to conduct fundraising events within their respective counties and will provide for the proceeds of the events to support the operations of their respective offices. Personally, I think it's a great bill, and I probably do. Um, 
make a motion to carry the bill? Well, no, to take care of the bill. I'll make a motion. All right. Just want to clarify that. No, this is something that had to be. So we just take care of coming through that. You know, like rodeo. Right. Come on. Yeah. Introduce yourself to the chairman. I'm Randy Hillman. I represent the sheriffs. Um, this this practice has been going on for years and years and years. I bet you there's between 12, maybe more sheriffs who do rodeos and do other fundraising events. There was just no statutory window that allowed it. And then, what we're doing, you know how we are. So look, just to be on the safe side so nobody could ever say anything. That's the purpose of this bill. So I'm yep. sorry, did that answer your question? Yes, we did it for a uh, Blunt County Sheriff yes, sir. back yes, sir. a couple of years ago or something. But yes, anyway, sir. Uh, I just wanted to make, I guess this is just trying to take care of it for everybody. Right? Yes, sir. So it, it, it just authorizes everybody, and there's no question about whether there is authority or not to, to do this. Representative Harris? Yeah. Is there any uh, reason why you use may, uh, may use instead of shall use? In section one, where it says uh, fundraising events within his or her respective county, including but not limited to rodeos, and may use the proceeds and profits from the events for any lawful purpose related to the operation of the office of sheriff. I mean, that, that was not, not what I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I will, sir. Uh, that was not, that the bill was drafted by LXA. Um, I understand the distinction. Um, would that allow the sheriff, since it said may, would that allow the sheriff? use it for other things other than the office well it'd have to specify other things it would have to say may use it for that it may not it's not saying may use it for anything else am i right on that yes sir. And, and the other thing obviously the sheriff is subject to the ethics That's right. <laughs> so if he did decide to go a different direction we, we did have a problem <laughs> yes sir so he can ask for that money and only use it for the next year or he can only use it for that you know so he made proceeds may go to that it's happening using for other. Okay, I guess I guess you see what I'm saying. Yes, yeah. Just out, just out of curiosity, because uh, I think it's a great thing. Is there very many counties that doesn't do anything like this, or is this just oh, yeah. general practice? And you're trying to fix it. Thank I'm you. just trying to make sure that everybody knows they have the ability <laughs> and the authority to do it. And and guys, this is compounded by y'all know two years ago when the permit thing went away. We're upside down 80 something percent on permits, and those dollars went into the sheriff's discretionary account to buy bullets and guns and cars and vests and that kind of stuff. And we are really struggling with that. So, anyway, can I ask for any questions? Yes, sir. Let's talk about DS for this permit. Uh, this permit thing you're talking about, to understand all counties are going to uh, the online internet request. Or the, the permits, the permits. So, not all do. I don't think they are <clears throat> technologically set up to do it. I, the vast majority do, but you've got some of the smaller counties who just don't have the dollar. It, does the citizen have a choice to go online or to get it handled in the office? He has it for offices who do offer it online, they can go on unless there's some wrinkle in it where the sheriff goes, you know, I say you filled out your application online, but there's there's an issue and then he would have to come in and address that issue. Um, certainly, you know, the default would be to go into the office and do it. Um, am I answering your question? I'm sorry. Uh, real close. Uh, does the information go to a secured, yes, sir. That does it, yes, sir. It is a secure database that is held. Where is that database? I know. <clears throat> the information flows. It depends on what county you're in. There are third-party vendors out there who take the information and vet it, um, and then trying to remember the flow. It would go through them, and then. I don't want to misstate it. Okay. The, the sheriff is responsible for that information ultimately. Uh, they do have third party vendors 
Um, I can't even remember some of the names. There's three or four of them out there. Um, oh, they're the statute. statute or, or, yes, the statute the requires that it be secure. Yeah. Yeah. You'll recall when they change the whole pistol permit, I mean, it requires that they to be secure. Is that a savings to the sheriff's department? No, it's so so we, Like I said, we're upside down to the tune of between 11 and $12 million statewide. I'm, I'm talking about the operation of doing it. No, sir. You, you contract with someone else or you can do it yourself. So that's the savings. That it's, contract. It is a lot of legwork and computer programming uh, and that you have to keep up with constantly and change constantly. You know how that stuff is. Um, they get a small piece of the permits in exchange for what they do. So it really... It, in a way, it, it, probably, it might cost us a little bit, but it's well worth it because it saves us. We don't have bodies to do computers, so we're not megabytes or megabits of group of bullets and guns. And, and, and that information is, is updated for its current. Yes, sir. When, when you renew your permit, um, depend, if you get a one-year, three-year, five-year, or lifetime, when that is renewed, technically a, a lifetime, you get issued the permit, but we had to set it up where every five years we have to do a check. That means we're undoing your permit. We're just checking on you to make sure that you haven't committed some sort of an offense or been involved in something that would forbid you from having a weapon. So we had to set a benchmark at some point, and we said every five years. So um, when you come back in, they rerun you to make sure that you're you are you're still living at one two three Jones Street, and that you haven't done anything bad. Just out of curiosity, um, a lot of people buy the permits now because they know they're going to have to go. You got? Can you give us any kind of? How that plays as far as numbers is that increasing? Is that, is yes, that sir. We we are down give or take eighty percent on permit sales across the state. There, there's kind of a misnomer there. There are certain states if you don't have to have a permit, Florida is just on permit list. They sign that same bill. So used to you had to have it when you went across state lines into Florida. My understanding now is you don't because they can't require a permit. Now, if you go to other states, and I think either, I think it's South Carolina that's not part of the reciprocity agreement. So if you go there, you darn well better have one. But there are other states that are still not permitted. So and that's helped to increase that number. Well, it, 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 it well. keeps certain people buying them. I wouldn't say, Representative, I wouldn't say it increases the number at all. I mean, again, we're down over 2021 numbers, but we're down 80 something percent. I, uh, we have the first, we have a second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Uh, All opposed, likewise. Bill, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Report back to Senator Beasley, I guess. All right. Um, any more business? If not, I hear a motion to adjourn. I know. All right. Thank <laughs> you.